Coming up next on screen is Who's Who. This is a popular segment amongst our viewers and is requested for each week. This is presented to you by Mr. Sonny Siegel, who is a very famous gentleman in our community and also the CIO of Montgomery County, Maryland. Each time he's on screen, he brings to us a guest who's more interesting than the last. Will he be able to top himself? Let's find out together. Welcome to the Who's Who Show. This is your host, Sonny Siegel. Today, our guest is Mr. Ashwani Jain. Ashwani is a former appointee in the Executive Office of the President in the Obama-Biden administration, a first-generation American, a native of Montgomery County, Maryland, a top 10 county in the U.S., the son of small business owners, a proud product of the highly rated Montgomery County public school system, a 15-year cancer survivor, and an at-large candidate for the Montgomery County Council position. Ashwini holds a master's degree in political management from the George Washington University, as well as dual Bachelor of Science degrees in business management and political science from the University of Maryland. Ashwini, Mel welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Mr. Siegel. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Now, you know, our uh, county executive from Montgomery County, Maryland, uh, often speaks about a delegation that he and Governor O'Malley of Maryland led to India. Mm -hmm. And he says that when there in Bangalore, they noted mm -hmm. that they were accompanied by three delegates from the state of Maryland. Mm -hmm and all three of, were of Indian origin, mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so, the, so the gravity of that, mm -hmm. the importance of that yeah. came home to them. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in your run for county council, mm -hmm. will you be the first Indian American, possibly the first Asian American mm -hmm. on county council? Is this uh, true? That's what I've heard, uh, and I think that would be great. But more importantly, you know, I'm running to help engage and empower every person in our community. Anyone who feels marginalized based on their race, their religion, their sexual orientation, I want to make sure they have a voice and a seat at the table. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's very good to know. Now, uh, can you share a little bit about your background mm -hmm. for our viewers, you yeah. know, who can get to know you a little bit mm -hmm. better? Absolutely. So I got involved into politics completely by accident. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, I'm a 15-year cancer survivor. I'm 28, but when I was 13, I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And going through that process at such a young age, you know, I felt very powerless. I felt very hopeless. And I realized that people kept talking about me instead of with me, just like a number. I remember sitting in the children's hospital feeling like I would never have the chance to accomplish much in my life. But through my work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and with President Obama's campaign and his White House, I found my purpose, and I, found, I made myself determined to make sure that no one else feels as powerless as I was. And when I started uh, working on the campaigns and working for his White House, I found an opportunity to really engage different communities around the country and here in Montgomery County, and I would be honored to do so on the Montgomery County Council as well. Mm -hmm. So why are you seeking office in Montgomery mm -hmm. County? So I think like you and, and like many of us, I love Montgomery County and have been so blessed to call this my home. I've lived in four of the five council districts on both the east and west sides of the county, mm. up county and down county. I was born in Rockville, and I've lived in Wheaton, Gaithersburg, Silver Spring, and Potomac. And I never left Montgomery County because it's home to my American dream. Mm. Today, however, we've found that the federal government is rejecting the values that you and I and so many in our community care so deeply about. Mm. And with that, so many of us are feeling that our government is talking about us instead of with us. And they're feeling that sense of powerlessness. And so I just want to make sure that I am helping our elected institutions become more representative, more responsive, more inclusive, more accountable, hmm. and help ensure that anyone has the same access to opportunity that I've been so blessed to have here in Montgomery County. This is home for me. Personally, I've, I've lived uh, all over the county and professionally, 
uh, a lot of the work I have done has been organizing the county at large, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I'm running. And you've position. certainly covered in the areas you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, almost all parts of the county. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Montgomery County mm -hmm. is unique in that its population is very diverse. Yes, almost 50 percent mm -hmm. of the uh, population. Yeah. Uh, actually uh, has parents from overseas. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so with that diversity, mm -hmm. how, how do they relate to you as a candidate? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's one of the greatest things about Montgomery County is that we, we are the model for what other counties in this country should look like. You know, we are the face of America. And mm -hmm. as you mentioned, we are one of the most diverse counties in the United States. Uh, I am a first generation American. My parents migrated to this country from India and when they came here to, to the United States, they had limited resources. You know, my grandfather was a school janitor. My mother, she is a product of community college and once worked at a nursing home making minimum wage, which at that time was, I think, $3.25 an hour. No, we've come a long um, ways. We've yeah. come a long ways. But when my parents but met- But that's still an issue. It's yeah. still an issue, exactly. And when my parents met, they moved to Montgomery County. This is where they bought, uh, they rented their first apartment in Montgomery County. They bought our first home in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. And my father started his own business in an outdoor flea market here in Montgomery County. And they came because, just like all, you know, everyone else who comes to Montgomery County, for the opportunities. And it's great to see that so many opportunities have been provided to so many people like my parents, like my family, but we need to do more. You know, like, the, like I was mentioning about the minimum wage, we need to make sure that we are increasing the minimum wage to ensure that anyone and everyone who lives in Montgomery County can afford to raise their families here. Mm -hmm. Not only work here, but live here and live in a successful way. Making sure that we're providing greater economic security for our families mm -hmm. so that everyone else has a reliable partner in government in the same way that my family had growing up and living in this county. Is minimum wage one of the issues you're running on or, or, or are there others and can you share those with us? Absolutely. So I think it's definitely important that we increase the minimum wage to something closer to a living wage here in the county. It's good for our businesses, it's good for our employees, and it's good for the residents. And, and a the, living and the local wage economy. would be? Uh, how, how, yeah. how is that characterized? Absolutely. So I think if uh, some of the studies have shown that uh, you know, typically you need to make at least $15.80 an hour to, to afford to live in the county. Um, right now, we don't have even a $15 minimum wage. It is something that's been currently looked at by the current council, and I think we need to move forward on that as quickly as possible. Um, but also, you know, education is a big issue. I'm a proud product of Montgomery County Public Schools. Mm -hmm. uh, but living all over the county, I've seen how our, how our education systems are not equally funded. And there's a lack of opportunities provided to students based on where they live in the county. And that's an issue. And if you look at studies, one way to address that opportunity gap is to propose universal pre-K and make sure that regardless of where you live in the county, you have access to those same opportunities. Mm -hmm. I'm also a strong believer in smart growth. And in my opinion, what smart growth means is creating inclusive communities with access to affordable housing, uh, opportunities for education systems and employment opportunities, but also quality transit. Mm -hmm. So whether you're looking at supporting the Purple Line or the BRT or even M83, it's making sure that we're doing it in a way that's very comprehensive, that includes the communities and actually takes their input in, and also make sure that, again, everyone has the same access to the opportunities that we come to Montgomery County for. Mm -hmm. And then the last part is you know, making sure that our immigrant families, our immigrant children feel safe and included, and just making sure we are really fighting for the values that make Montgomery County a beacon of hope, uh, especially in these crazy times that we live in. Mm -hmm. So you actually hope to create an entire mm -hmm. ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, with, within the county's uh, mm -hmm. infrastructures, yeah. architectures, and all human capital mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely, to, it's, it's investing. To uh, accelerate mm -hmm. growth, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned uh, smart mm -hmm. governing. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So does, did your family's background mm -hmm. actually uh, influence your mm -hmm. uh, drive to mm -hmm. serve? Mm -hmm. in public service? Yeah, I think, you know, luckily my family story is not unique. It's just one example in a million that makes America and specifically Montgomery County so great. Uh, I've been very blessed to have a great supportive network of friends and family. Uh, my, my, from my dad, I learned the value of hard work and how to create a business from the ground up mm -hmm. and the value of customer service. From my mother, I learned how to always keep a positive attitude. Uh, I have a younger sister who's three and a half years younger than me and she is my best friend way smarter than I could ever be. 
uh, but just a hard worker and, and very resilient. A quick story that I'll share. Um, after my uh, cancer treatments were done when I was 13, I had an opportunity to meet Denzel Washington right. through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I remember going through that process at such a young age, it not only takes a toll on the cancer patient, but also on the family. And I remember when I was speaking with Denzel, I got a quick look at my, my parents and my sister. And that was the first time in a series of months of a lot of constant struggle that I saw them happy. I saw them have joy and hope in their faces. And right after that, I said, I want to replicate this as much as I can. Mm -hmm. So immediately after that experience, I started volunteering for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And that's when I also started volunteering for President Obama's first campaign. Mm -hmm. And it was just how do you provide more opportunities for other people who may not have the same opportunities that I've been blessed to have? Mm -hmm. And how do you empower them? How do you engage them in the political process, in their communities? And how do you make sure that you're elevating the voices that need to be elevated? Mm -hmm. And my parents and my sister have been so supportive in that journey. And I'm also blessed to say I have a lot of friends and former colleagues in the Obama White House that have joined me and supported our journey and, uh, and supported my vision to make Montgomery County an even better place to live. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful sentiment you touched on, uh, spreading that joy, that mm -hmm. very special feeling of mm -hmm. hope. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for that uh, thought. Uh, now, in Montgomery, mm -hmm. there are 25,000 or more mm -hmm. small businesses. Yeah. Do you have a vision for mm -hmm. small businesses because they mm -hmm. are the backbone of uh, the economy? Absolutely. Uh, I think coming from a small business background and, and seeing my father create his own business from the ground up to now a successful company, uh, it is a family business. I, I've learned, like I said, the importance of customer service, but also I've learned that the greatest asset to any business is its employees. Mm -hmm. And you have to take care and invest in your employees. You have to make sure that you are helping them not only work in the area that they're working in, but also live in that same geographic area. Keep their disposable income in that same community. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we need to help invest in the employees to make sure they feel more loyal, more satisfied to the company. They don't leave to other companies in other areas. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the reasons why I am supporting an increase in the minimum wage, why I am supporting smart growth, why I am supporting making sure that anyone who lives a and works in this county can afford to raise their families here as well. I see, I see, very, very, very uh, well thought out uh, mm -hmm. uh, goals. Uh, so you're running at large, and mm -hmm. of course, earlier you mentioned that running at large mm -hmm. means all one million people, yes. so to speak, or one million plus yes. people have to believe in you, mm -hmm. to vote for you and to yeah. put you in office. Yeah. Why not run from a district? Absolutely. So, like I mentioned, I lived in four of the five council districts uh, all over Montgomery County, uh, and I've worked uh, in the county at large. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2008, when I was a volunteer for the Obama campaign, I was organizing uh, several different high schools in Montgomery County. Uh, then, between the president's first campaign and second campaign, I was his student director for the state of Maryland. So organizing all the universities, colleges, and high schools in the state of Maryland, obviously also at Montgomery County at large, mm -hmm. Uh, for President Obama's legislative agenda. In 2012, I was, uh, I was picked by President Obama to be his regional director for Montgomery County. So organizing all of our voters, students, activists, and even elected officials in Montgomery County to support the campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, and through my experiences working in the White House, again, I, I've organized in the county at large. Uh, for example, I worked in an office called Presidential Personnel in the White House, mm -hmm. and it was my job to recruit and train diverse candidates all over the country and also all over Montgomery County to take leadership roles across the executive branch. Then I also ran grassroots efforts to get families in Montgomery County access to affordable health care and affordable housing when I served at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services mm -hmm. and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And I also served with Vice President Biden on his cancer moonshot. So actually working with researchers here in Montgomery County at places like the NIH, uh, the National Cancer Institute, and the Walter Reed Medical Center to make sure that we are supporting our amazing research institutions. Mm -hmm. A lot of these research institutions that are housed in Montgomery County right, helped save true. my life. And so being able to work with them in that capacity on behalf of President Obama and Vice President Biden was an honor. Mm -hmm. And finally, through my work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, I've actually fulfilled my dream of going from wish recipient to wish grantor and wish ambassador here in Montgomery County and helping other uh, kids and also their families who are going through and battling a life-threatening medical condition in the Montgomery County area have the same access to opportunities that I've been blessed to have. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I would be honored 
uh, if the voters here in Montgomery County chose me to represent them as an at-large member. Now, Ashwini, I know you have uh, some very highly visible and high-ranking uh, endorsements. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, most important is your vision for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we're practically out of time. Is there a very short mm -hmm. message uh, for our viewers? Absolutely. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. for, for an example, when is the election really? The election is June 26th, and I would urge everyone to go to my website, voteashwanijane.com, to find out more information about me and my campaign. Well, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. And all the best in your uh, endeavors. Thank you. you. Know? I appreciate it. This is your host, Sonny Siegel, signing off on the Who's Who show. I hope to see you next month at the same place and the same time.